because we're so far removed. Because what this is telling us is what God <coughs> thinks about sin. We, you know, just say, oh, well, you know, a little white lie doesn't hurt here or there. And, and you know, we have such a flippant attitude towards sin. This is what he thinks. He thinks, you know, if it's unintentional, then you do, you go through this big, long thing, you know, and it's because we don't Grass. grasp what sin does to the heart of our Father. And what it did was cause the death of his very own son. And most people just glaze over it and they say, you know, I remember, you know, as Baptists, you know, that basically you can do anything you want and still be saved because Jesus died. Well, what kind of respect is that for the sacrificial pouring out of his essence? God gave up his Every, only born, not just his firstborn of his flock, his only born of his flock, to complete and total yeah, sacrifice. And this shows us, you know, it's expensive, you know, to do. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, they had to take, uh, you know, if you take one of your flocks, then you don't have it to breed, you don't have it to eat, you don't have it to milk, you know, just all the rest of it. It's, you know, so sin, and look at all the people it involves. You know, it involves all these priests. And we don't realize the repercussions of our sin. You know, one little sin, well, this isn't going to hurt anybody. You know, we're two consenting adults. And, you know, so, so you, you blast families, you know, just because of their selfishness. You know, um, you just destroy people's lives. And, and that's what, to me, the whole point of this, going through this, is, is to see, you know, how devastating. In order, working on my own. In order to come before the Father, you have to accept the sacrifice principles. Here. In order to come to the Father for forgiveness of sins, you have to accept the sacrifice, the sacrificial process. Here. Having been consummated in Christ, unless you acknowledge that sacrifice, you're not going to get in to the Holy of Holies. The Father says, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may receive mercy and grace in time of need. But come boldly doesn't mean go barging in. Exactly right. And it refers back to <coughs> what Jim was saying. To the element of honor. honor. Um, so, if you don't honor the sacrifice that Jesus made, Okay, so let's go back to what this offering is. This is the first offering. This is just a burnt offering and coming and approaching him, right? But it goes back to the why. It's because not one of us is able to come to him. Alright? Because that's that's what it talks about here. Is that if no man is worthy, why were the priests the ones that had to be consecrated for a week prior to? Well, it was, and they had sacrifices to do, and they had sin offerings to do, and they had, and it wasn't, it wasn't even necessarily sin here that we had to atone for necessarily. Right. What it was, just, we weren't even worthy to come. <coughs> right. And it wasn't just because we had something in our hand, and it wasn't because we just had enmity with our brother or sister. Even to come forward into the presence of the Lord, we had to have, we had to go through the process to even enter and there again, we still don't even enter. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it's just coming back to that. We have to, we have to, we have to uh, approach him with those steps because there's no other way. He set it up a specific way. That's why over and over and over again, especially through this portion, it talks about how many times was it sprinkled on the altar? What do you exactly do with the entrails? The washing of the entrails, the washing of the legs, the washing, of, you know, on and on and on and on and on. There's a specific purpose for it. Why? Well, it's because we can't even approach him. We're not in his realm. We're not in his, his spiritual realm. We're not in his emotional realm. And, we, and, and there again, before we get too into ourselves, of, well, now we're coming back to it. 
hold on, there's a reason we have to go back to this and learn this. We're going to be doing this again. That's why we have to put our hand on the actual animal's head, slit its throat. I mean, have, has anybody ever done that? I mean, I know I've, I've killed a couple of animals. I've actually butchered some animals. It's not the funnest process in the world, to be honest with you. Mm. But it's something we have to associate with every one of us if we want to even come to him. If we want to come bring a guilt offering, a sin offering, we gotta, we got to do this first. Right. It's like getting the instructions to get the instructions on Mount Sinai. Right. This is and how you're going to come get to the, how you're going to come And that goes back to the honor factor Absolutely. of it. But it's not just honor. It's not just that. It's that we can't even approach him, approach him without it. You know, there's no way to cross that plane. You know, he's, he's sitting on this plane up here. We're down here and there's no way to get there except through doing something else. <clears throat> he says that if we will confess our sin, he's just in place for and the fullness of all right, unrighteousness, okay? Uh -huh. That's a cleansing process. And you best do it any sin that you commit. Well, sure. But he says, come boldly before the throne of grace. But there's a process to doing it. That's, that's what, what I just said. said. That's what I just said. What did David have to do before he went in and took the showbread? What, what was the purpose for Jesus washing the feet? Well, I mean... I know what you're saying, Eddie, but there again, we got to go back to what's going to be in that day. I mean, if he says that sacrifices are to be restored, right, we need to know them for that purpose so that we can do them correctly. And if we're doing them today, and, and we are to approach them boldly, but we can't do it if we don't even know the steps of it. When, when we confess our sin... If we confess our sins still in ignorance, are we covered? Absolutely, I truly believe that. But we're not to be ignorant people. He didn't call us out to be ignorant people. He didn't call us out to read over this and not understand it. He didn't call us out to read over this and, okay, well, this was great for them. This is so that we would understand the process of every time we come boldly in front of him, approaching him, it's because we're doing it in these steps. We're coming to that altar and we're mm -hmm. laying down that sacrifice. And it is that is not that physical sacrifice right now. But every time we're doing it, we have to do it in this order. We have to make sure that that sacrifice that we're laying down is cut the right way. That we have identified with it. That we have washed it. That we have placed it. That we have done it in that step. Because if we don't, it's void. Isn't it? I mean, that's the question. Isn't it void if it's if we know the steps and this is why he's giving it to us and we're not doing it? Okay, if you go all the way back to basically Genesis, the requirement for approaching the Father or honor, uh -huh. the requirement for sin is blood. Uh -huh. So what he's laying out here is the blood, the importance of the blood. Right. In order to just approach it. Right. right. Before you can even approach to apply the blood for sin, you got to shed blood to even mm -hmm. do that. <coughs> got hands all over the place. Fred, we'll start over here and then we'll go back this way again. Okay. Uh, that, the reason, okay, we had to bring the lamb into the presence of God. We're not talking Passover. This no, is just regular burning. No, I'm saying, but, but uh, this is uh, what well, this goes into the others too. Okay. And then you had to cut its own throat. It's like you cut the other throats too. You had to know that animal, and you had to have feelings for that animal. Now you recognize a little bit of what God did when He let His Son die. So now you realize what God has done for us for us to do this. And then when he was sacrificed, he was sacrificed, see, quite often when they had their sacrifices, the, there were so many people sacrificing, they couldn't get them all into the temple. But as long as you were within sight of the curtain of the temple, which was out on the mountain, the Levites could help, when you kept the cut's throat, they would gather the blood and run it to the priest, the priest would throw it up on the thing there. That was, uh, 
uh, hundreds of thousands of, 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 of uh, cattle that were being slaughtered in one day. So all of these people were having to cut their own, they were having to do the own cutting themselves. They had to kill the animal that they had feelings for. And then the priest had to run and put it on there. So all of this was all uh, put together to give us an idea of what we were doing. And so if you're having to do this uh, every time you sin, it makes you not want to sin, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, this is not, we're not talking the sin offering yet. We're still just talking burn offerings. No, but I mean, just but we're, we're, let's stay on topic. Okay. Because we're getting stuff going everywhere. Okay. Let's stay on topic. Please. <laughs> yes. Uh, as far as the, the burnt offering and the approach to Yahweh, uh, and, you know, it's easy to get mixed up with sin, but when you think about Cain and Abel, they came to worship. Okay, so that's the first approach is to worship, you know, to worship him. Before he will even acknowledge you or listen to you, you have to. With Abel, he brought the mean cup. Uh, he brought the uh, grain offering. The way around. Okay, so there Abel brought the fat. Yeah, Cain oh, brought the Oh, did I say the wrong Yeah, Cain brought the fat. You know who it is. Okay, yeah. so Abel was the good, uh, I'm sorry. So so Abel brought, uh, brought the blood. That was the whole point. It wasn't, you know, yeah, it was that uh, Cain also did not bring the best, but he brought brought the great offering. You cannot bring the great offering until you first of all brought exactly. the burnt offering. Cool. And so this is showing us the order. <clears throat> so we have to have blood before we can approach, before we can say, good morning, Lord. You know, the only way he acknowledges us is because we have the blood of the lamb already applied to our heart. You know, and, and so that's to me, that's what this burnt offering is. Step one. Yes. Step one. Something she said just struck with me. She said, you know, they went to worship before they could even ask for forgiveness, they had to worship. And I, th I think that's why he put the burnt offering first. If we don't worship him, then how can we expect him to forgive us? How can we come to him when we're guilty and say, oh, please forgive me? You know, I don't ever spend time worshiping you. I don't live my life to you. But I feel guilty, so I'm bringing my sacrifice and I want forgiveness. So even though we don't bring a physical sacrifice, we must be living in such a way that we are worshiping him day after day after day, putting him first Amen. before we can ever come to him and ask for forgiveness. And that goes back to what you were saying, Jim, about honor and humble, because worship does not mean sing songs in scripture. Nowhere in that in scripture is worship means sing songs. Worship is always about. Wait a minute, I've got a verse uh -oh. in Hebrews 13, verse 15, that says, uh, Through him, then, let us continually offer up a slaughter offering of praise to Elohim, that is the fruit of our lips, giving <coughs> thanks to his name. So, the, the fruit, and then, and do not forget to do good and to share, for which such slaughter offerings Elohim is well pleased. So we can worship him with the fruit of our lips. But praise and worship are two different things. We, we lump them together in our modern day society. So we, we look at, we, see, we hear a word and we put our definition on it. But worship all through scripture is the word for humble. Bow. Get low. That's why every Jewish prayer starts out with Baruch Atadonai. Because Baruch comes from the root of Barak, your knees. So you bend your knees. And when you bend your knees to a king, then you offer a gift. You bring him honor. Um, Acknowledge who he is. Right. Step one. Acknowledge who he is. That's right. That's right. I thought praise was a fat song. I want to do a slow song. Oh, that's what. Gabriel has it. Did everybody hear that? Praise is a fast song. Worship is a slow song. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were. That's what we were taught. You know, Fred, like you say, the hardest thing about learning the Bible is unlearning what you were told it said. You know. It's, and it's then it's something, Eric, that I went, went 
and just read through and read through because I was mixed up with that. I was like, well, what's it just? Uh, nah, nah, nah. So I just went through worship, and every place worship in English, going back to the interlinear, it's bowing, bowing, showing that respect, showing that honor. Praise is praise, worship. Lifting your hands. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of the fast song, slow song idea in a way. Yes? Yes, yeah, just go, going back to what uh, Ms. Wilman was saying. Okay, so we know that, that he's enthroned on the praises of Israel. And, and so we're saying, okay, we need to worship before we come and bring our, our guilt offering. And so we go like, into his courts with praise, into his, his gates with thanksgiving, right? So as we draw near it, he's giving the judgment from the mercy seat. When we're worshiping, if he's enthroned on our praises, if his throne in the heavens is our praises, we're building the worship, the mercy seat, before we can even come to ask for mercy. Present. <clears throat> um, then we'll get to the next one. Two things. One, I think oh, yeah. when we talked about where we sometimes get confused is you are you are charged with actually the process of killing your offering. But from then on, it's actually the priest who takes over and prepares him for the altar. So that's kind of where it sometimes gets confused. You see all this, you think of the priest as he's doing everything. Well, he pretty much does do everything past the point to where you have actually mm -hmm. offered your sacrifice, right? You know, and the other thing is, is that it's. I think it's really we've kind of been running around it, but it's really important. He lays this out in a pattern for a reason. The first three offerings have absolutely nothing to do with sin. I mean, so we always think of offerings as sin mm -hmm. and remission of sin, mm -hmm. and it's a much greater, much more beautiful picture than just. Getting rid of your sin, it's a, which is a really personal object uh, or point of view. You know, it's like, oh, I need to, I need to get rid of my sin. No, this, this is all about, if you will, honoring. The, and it's this whole process and design for how you honor, how you can come to honor your father. Here's, the, I'm giving you this process. Because you don't understand honor, really. So I'm going yeah, to don't. give you a process you on how to honor. You know, you, it takes something. I mean, if nothing else, if you look at even us honoring, or sometimes we use the word respect, very similar words, but they are about, like Jim often says, it's not about you. That's it's not what a, this book is about. Right. It's about looking at this other person. That's how you, you don't honor somebody else by taking care of yourself. Right. You know? Jay, been quiet so far. I'm trying. <laughs> For honor, if we can look at that as showing a understanding showing of respect to the power, the awesomeness of God, to be able to know that his finger, his breath, has so much power, and to give respect to that, show of to humble ourselves, knowing that we are nothing. That would maybe help understanding of where we have lost it in showing true honor. We think we're pretty good. We do. We're full of ourselves. <clears throat> A lot. Old King live forever. <laughs> exactly. Old King live forever. Last thing. So he says. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Last thing. Leviticus is given to every single person of the children of Israel. Right. It's supposed to be read every single seven years. It's supposed to be read every year, but it's supposed to be read 
uh, as the congregation in the mass every seven years. Every single person in the children of Israel had to understand not only what their role was in bringing the, bringing the offering, but what the priest was to do. And I think that steps into the realm of why. That goes into the reason why. It's so that we, as taking on that priesthood, because we're in the because of that priesthood, we have to know what the sacrificial <coughs> order is. And it is for, I just, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just, okay, well, we just hand this over to the priests anymore. Well, no, the children of Israel had to know what the priests were doing. It wasn't just so that the priests could know. Okay. So. Kind of like there's a, a guy at work, we were talking about tithes one time and giving money to the church and, and stuff like that. And I said, do you ever go to your elders or your pastor or whoever, you know, whatever the terms are, and do they ever share with you what they do with the money you give them? Why not? Why don't you go ask? It's your money. You're giving it to them to take care of. Are they doing something that is right with it? You know, it's, it's sort of the same idea. You're bringing your offering, which happens to be an animal. you got to know what the priest is doing with it. Is he going to do what's right? you got to know what's right. Because so you, you're not, you don't like, you know, give it to him, slaughter it, and run away. You're probably there to see the process, I would think. I would hope that we were there to see that process. Make sure, okay, because I know what this says. Okay, good. <laughs> Burn offering, I'm done. I'm going to go get some grain. Because <laughs> that's the next step. This is just, we've been 45 minutes on just that. Probably wasn't, probably the most important because it prefaces the most first of one. all the other ones. <laughs> Without this, the rest of them are going to be wrong. Like, Dottie, what you were saying with Cain and Abel. I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic picture. Well, and and what, did, what did God say to Cain? Why is your face downcast? Why are you angry? Don't you know if you did what is right, you'd be accepted? Well, his so problem was, know was right. that's, you know, the brain always kind of like our good works. And so both, a lot of people try to bring their good works before they bring the blood. You can't even approach Yahweh. Exactly. Blood. Exactly. All right. Yes. yes. Probably not so much. And three hours. <laughs> that just you got him. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, if you read verse six, he, not meaning the priest, is to skin the burnt offering and cut it in pieces. It took us six men three hours. It's a okay. butchery cow. Mm. It's only like a six to seven hundred pound cat. Yeah. Or bigger. Or bigger. Or bigger. Yeah, so, I've tried that. Yeah. I just thought I'd kind of put a little perspective in that. Yeah. Little, oh, little kind of throat, throat type of thing. Yeah. Cut his throat would be the easy part. Right. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yes, Fred. Did you bring up the fact that who, who did the first sacrifice? Cain and Abel. God did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because thank you. the sacrifice was an animal. Two kinds of animals. Yeah. 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 But we're not talking about sin offering yet. We've got to get off the sin offering, people. We're not talking about sin offering yet. <laughs> yes, you're right. That was a first sacrifice. Was God. Yes. Everybody seems to think that uh, only, uh, only man is able. Yeah. That's right. Can I bring something up? Uh, yes. Okay, so what was Yeshua as a sacrifice? What was he? He was slain from the belly. We haven't got there yet. Right, but he was a on aroma. Yeah, he was a sweet smelling aroma. So as Ephesians five one and two. Right. And then again with, with the sacrifice in the garden, was that was that not just a burnt offering then too? And what's the purpose of a burnt offering? So now, <coughs> now Adam and Eve understand that they're naked and they're ashamed. God doesn't want them to be ashamed of themselves all the time. And they want to be able to you know, kind of have a relationship with them. And so you know, possibly a sin offering, maybe you could look at it that way, but Really, what it is is he said, "Okay, now you're going to approach me. Now, you can, now we can invoke." Me. So, I'd say it's probably a lot closer to a burnt offering. Not only. 
Yeah, yeah. They're, pro they're probably, probably going to, that one will probably catch all of these. Right. Yeah. I'm sure. Right. So let's move on. Chapter 2 The Grain Offering. Oh, and the burn offering is always first. <clears throat> We've established that, yes. Burn offering is always first. We beat that horse to death. <laughs> but, it's, but we need to because we don't understand this stuff. We read through this. I had a guy at work tell me, yeah, there's all those genealogies. I'll just pretty much close the book and go to the New Testament. Uh, uh. How about Genesis 5? Do you know the genealogy about that? It tells the whole redemption story for the name. Exactly. Can we yeah, just, genealogies aren't important. Can we just put the note in there in the offering for for this Olaf? Because you'll see that. Olaf. Yeah. Olaf. Where will we see that, Jim? Um, I don't know. I, I just, I see it. I see people, uh, that there are references to Korban Allah, but people don't understand that, oh, that's the burnt offering. That's the most important initial. So just so that we start making those references to what he calls it, it's in the Korban Allah, it's not a burnt offering. That's why I asked the question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Allah means to go up. Okay, grain offering. Who? Being back to our pattern here. What? Any person. Person. So we got a person. Again. They have to slaughter their own grain, right? Yeah. They have to grind it too. Yep. Fine flour. So what does, let's see. What else besides the fine flour is part of the grain offering? All right. Oil and incense. I'm going to put incense because I don't have enough room. But yes, frankincense. Depends on what translation, if it says frankincense, like NIV just says incense, so. But, all right, and what do they do with it? Where do they take it? To the priest. To the priest. So the priest or another person, another who and where? It says specifically Aaron's sons. So does that mean that they can't take it to any of the other priests? No. You shall bring it. So does Aaron summon the priest up in the burnt offering as well? Yeah, I was actually looking at that when we read through it. Mm -hmm. But Aaron was Aaron was just part of the Anyway, priests. Where? What altar? Yep, big altar. Big altar at the entrance to the meeting. They couldn't get to the other one. Exactly. We're not there yet. We're still out here. Right. All right. Let me get some of the stuff about what different kinds of it's baked in an oven, cooked in a pan, but all right, but why are we bringing a grain offering? It's sweet aroma. Sweet aroma. Memorial. Memorial, thank you. Memorial to what? It's a question. It's a good question. It's a question I have. Who has the answer? Joshua, what's the answer? Uh,